So we've looked at morphemes, and we've seen that there are actually challenges um, with, with dealing with morphemes. If you build a, mor a morphological system in a new language, you need to understand the morphology of the language, how the morphemes interact. You need to have lists of the morphemes. Okay? And um, even some of these things are quite ill-defined. So um, in the last, I guess, decade or so, people have switched to units that you automatically get from the data. So I give a technique a whole bunch of text, and from that, it extracts units that are subword units. So they're not words, they're not characters, they're somewhere in between, but I don't have to define it by hand. I actually just run a little algorithm on my data and I get it out. There are two very common approach approaches. Uh, sentence piece is one, and then byte pair encoding, the one we're going to look at um, now, um, is, is um, used very, very often. Okay, and here's the algorithm. What we're going to do is we're going to start and initialize the algorithm. And what we're going to do is we're going to just put every one of the unique characters in my training text. I'm going to put that in the vocabulary. Okay, and then I'm going to separate my data set into a whole bunch of separated characters. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to iteratively merge characters that occur next to each other a lot. Okay, and I'm going to do this greedily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my current data set. I'm going to find the two characters next to each other that occur most often together. And I'm going to merge those two. Okay, and then I'm going to add this merged unit to my system vocabulary and then I run through my data set again and everywhere where these two characters occur next to each other I'm going to create a unit that consists of the, these two characters together. You repeat this for a number of iterations and um, not until you get to the end because if you get to the end then you've actually merged everything. Okay, um, So you run it for a fixed number of iter iterations typically till you get the number of units that you're looking for. Now I get a new text in that I want to process and what I would then do is I would apply the merges that we've learned on the, on the training data, the stuff we learned on the training data, I would apply that to the new data in the same order that I've learned them. Let's look at an example because then it will actually make um, more sense. So this is the corpus. Um, it's a strange corpus. Low, low, low. Lower, lower. Newer, 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 newer. Wider, wider. Wider. New, new, new. Okay, cool. And we want to basically break up these words into little subword units that are sensible according to my training data. And this is my training data. I've got 19 word tokens from five word types. So I start and I initialize the algorithm. The first step in the initialization is basically to construct a little vocabulary which consists of the individual characters. So L is one, O is one, W is one, you get the idea. So all the unique characters in my data set would be part of the vocabulary up to, I think, I is another one. And then the next step in the nationalization is I break up my corpus, this corpus, into the different separate characters that I've got in my current vocabulary. And what that looks like is this. Okay. So here I've just broken up the vocabulary of my corpus into L, O, W, because these are the individual units in my vocabulary. I've also got a space. Sorry. Um, let's make this very clear. Space is also one of my characters here in the beginning. Now I break up my corpus into separate, separate units according to this. And I end up with this. So L is a unit of its own. O is a unit of its own. W is a unit of its own. Space is a unit of its own. And so on. Okay, now we're on the inside of the algorithm. Iteration one. We find the most frequent pair of adjacent tokens. The most frequent pair of adjacent tokens. So stare at that and then tell me what is the first merge that we will do. So what is the first merge? I think you're right. I think there's a tie. There's ER and R space. And both of them, I think, uh, I have to stare at this because I didn't um, see this before I actually went in here, but I think you're right. They actually occur the same number of times, okay? So which one do I pick? I don't care. I pick either one, okay? The one I prepped is ER being merged, okay? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to merge E and R. That's the next step in the algorithm. We merge the tokens E and R, okay? Which means we go through our data set and we merge. Everywhere where there's an E and an R, I merge it, I merge it, I merge it, Dunk, dunk, 
Tank, 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 tank. Damn it. Okay. Man, that was very disappointing. Okay. I think that's every everyone. Okay, cool. We merge them and we now write them next to each other. We also add er to our vocabulary, so we get a t new, a new character, a new symbol here, which is er, and we add that to our vocabulary. So our vocabulary is everything from before, and er has now been added. Okay, cool. Now I merge er iteration two. Boom. This is what I end up with, and here you can see that the er's have been merged. Um, so this is a good question. The question is, do we still have in our vocabulary separate E's and R's um, as well as the ER together? And the answer is yes, because here we've got an E that occurs on its own without an R, right? So that's still in our, in our vocabulary. What is our next merge? Okay, cool. Who votes for ER space as a merge? Yes, you are right. If you count the, the thing that occurs most often, you will see that ER space actually occurs the most. So you merge. ER and space. Okay? And what that means is I get a new unit. The unit is called ER space. And I add this unit in that um, third step. I add that unit to my vocabulary. And I've got ER space in my vocabulary. Together with ER and E and R. Cool. So what do we do now? We merge all of them. Dum, dum. Dum, dum, da dum, dum, da dum, 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 dum. You end up with this, okay? You can go through the rest, right? So uh, this, uh, in the third iteration, you would merge uh, N and E. Um, there would be sometimes there might be ties, um, and but that's fine. Then you just pick one of them, and you probably merge the the stuff in the next iteration if there are if there are ties. Okay. And you can go through these steps if you want to. I mean, I encourage you to do it. Um, so that now you've got, you've added ER, you've added ER space, and now you've added NE. Okay. And I'm, I'm just going to run this for six iterations, um, seven iterations. Let's just see what we end up with. So after seven iterations, we end up with, with this here. And we've got our vocabulary of units. You can have a look at that. Does that look like a reasonable breaking up of words into little subword units? This is a, a trivial example, but I think it actually looks pretty good. Low is a unit on its own. Er is a unit on its own, which is also a morpheme, right? Um, and you just did that directly from the data. Most machine translation systems today, they use byte pair encoding, actually. Um, many, many NLP applications would use byte pair encoding as their uh, unit that they use to model things. Yeah, this is a good question. Like, at what point do you stop? And this is a hyperparameter that you need to choose. You don't want to go on um, um, merging forever because then what's going to happen is just, just going to end up with low, lower, newer, wider. Your whole, uh, and in the extreme case where you have full sentences, a whole sentence will just be a unit. Right, because you can continue merging. So normally what you do is before I decide this is how many units I want to model and I keep on merging on until I reach that number. And that's really nice because it gives you a handle, a trade-off between characters and full words. And you can then decide where to stop. Yeah. Um, so if you get new input data, what you would do is you would apply the same merges that you got on the tr training data in the order that you, you got them. In other words, in this case, you would look for all the E's and the R's in your new input data and you would merge them. Then you would look for all the ER spaces, you would merge them. Then you would look for all the NE's, you would merge them. And if we are just um, iterating until iteration seven, then we apply that merge um, also to the, the test data and then that's what you feed into your model.